So here's a video for the younger members of my audience. If you're older than me, you'll probably laugh at how seriously I'm taking myself and things, but I just turned 40 a couple of days ago and it wasn't exactly my favorite thing in the world. And I think ever since my 39th birthday, uh, this kind of dark existential weight has been descending on me very subtly. It's not been easy to capture, but I've been a little bit more impatient both in my work and getting things out there. And I've been a bit more impatient with my girlfriend and other people that surround me. Just, just this growing feeling of angst. And it, it's crazy because obviously age and birthdays and who we should be, like all that unconscious programming are a bunch of beliefs, they're made up. You, you don't have to have reached a certain point in your life when you make a transition like this. And still, there is a, a psychic weight, I think, to going through a major transition or a major birthday and, and 40 is uh, the most powerful aging uh, transition in my culture because it's you're halfway through your life, right? Life expectancy somewhere between 78, 79. It's actually going backwards for the first time now. And so I'm halfway, basically. And, and I do have a really good sense that at some point my mental faculties will start to regenerate. I won't be as uh, capable, as skillful, as productive, as clear, as sharp as I'm able to be right now. And that, rather than being a concept far off into the distance, is starting to become a bit more of an embodied uh, knowing and truth. And so my life is speeding up. I'm filled with more fire, more urgency. There's no more time to waste. Anyway, Four or five days before I turned 40, I was particularly <laughs> grouchy and unhappy. But on the day of 40 itself, I kind of, from somewhere came this kind of medic sense of humor and I let things go. Like the medic sense of humor is, uh, you know, we, we see decaying and rotting bodies and all kinds of disgusting stuff every single day. Let's just keep a wider perspective on it. And I even went to the books, bookshop my girlfriend got me a couple of books I have my Japanese death poems now lined up and uh, I don't think this is related to, to death or aging but I've got liberation day hopefully when I turn 40 that was a day of liberation rather than a day of shackles and yeah I think more or less it feels like it I've always been a bit of an existential fellow for better or for worse anyway why I'm making a bit more of a personal video to share on my channel with you today is because I wanted to offer some of the celebrations and some of the regrets that I feel as I hit this milestone in my life. And like I say, th this might be uh, fruit for younger members of the audience out there. And again, if you're older than me, then feel free just to laugh at my seriousness. So celebrations, the first thing I celebrate as I hit this milestone is about finding really my place and my vocation in the world. And I can't stress enough how heavy a burden this was when I was in my lower 20s. I studied philosophy at university I took minor subjects in different aspects of psychology, but really I graduated with a, a Bachelor of Arts in the subject of psychology the thing that I was most interested in, even though I hid it from the world of my friends, was girls and love and how people fell in love with one another. And I said to a friend of mine when we were pulled up one evening in a car, we were talking about the big questions, what do you want to do with your life, what is your ideal job? And I said to him, I want to be a psychologist, but for fundamentally well and healthy people. And the notion of coaching didn't actually exist in our culture at the time. So I, I was speaking out loud a, a made up profession. And the other thing that I said is I want to travel in perpetuity. I want to find a way so I could live in some exotic climate and not have to come home, but be able to earn, earn a respectable wage while, while I went out and did that. And I think Wi-Fi didn't even exist at the time. So to be 21 and wish for and want these things, it seemed like I wanted the impossible and who would have thought that it could come together that the internet exists and you can run a business from anywhere in the world. Coaching comes in and redefines a big portion 
of self-development and what is the field of psychology right down to the mainstream and who would have thought that in this day and age obviously when I was growing up there was a huge tendency towards divorce and unhappy relationships but now people are really investing in understanding themselves and their relationship patterns it's becoming more and more uh, of a mainstream regular thing who would have thought that I could have a profession and I think it just goes to show that no matter how impossible your collection of interests seem and no matter how impossible the vision for your ideal lifestyle might seem technology and society can change so drastically that 10 years down the line everything can click into place in the most wonderful way and if my 21 year old self knew the kind of lifestyle and work that I did between the age of 30 and 40 he would be absolutely shocked and it would save him so much suffering because literally after I finished my philosophy degree I was having nightmares for about five or six years of not handing in my paper in time or going to the exam the following morning like not knowing what to write down on the paper and I would end up flunking my degree I got a, I, I got a good mark out of it but still the the stress lived in my body for so long and even in the early years that I was traveling there was such a big part of me that was questioning okay Jordan you're buying yourself a few years of time by doing this backpacking thing what are you gonna do when you finish if only the 40 year old me <laughs> could float down from the sky with a video like this and say Jordan it's all gonna be fine you're gonna find a way to give your gifts to the world you're gonna find your your vocation and it's really nice to feel that even though I don't have a book out there in the world at the moment um, and there are other kind of milestoney things that I haven't achieved at 40 I feel zero weight of you know you're flunking in terms of success and for me that that's the most enormous celebration to know that I've really found my gift what I want to be doing and that external material success is is not a burden on my soul the second thing I want to celebrate is I invested pretty much everything I had to figure out love so that aching question I had is in my late teens my early 20s what is love what is attraction between men and women why do we fall for such and such a woman why does it not quite work out you know why do I why am I with the women that I'm not maybe in love with but the ones that I am in love with they seem out of my reach all these fundamental questions that really dog me I feel like I've resolved and it's very easy for me to become hubristic right now I figured out love I figured out the minds and the hearts of women and everything's working well because of course my own relationship could collapse in the next day or two just by putting this out there online um, you know heaven forbid something might happen as a consequence but I figured it out or rather my spirit my body has come into a state of ease with how love works I notice it when it arises I have ways of deepening it I have ways of allowing love and intimacy to grow and to come into me and I feel like I really understand women uh, a lot of men <laughs> go to the grave never having figured out women and the simple I think in a sentence is if you're trying to figure out the hearts and minds of women it's usually because you see women as the gatekeepers that are in the way of you getting something that you want and as soon as you release your attachment to getting the thing that you want from women women in the world are, are, are people to be enjoyed and the relationship is something to be enjoyed um, rather than deduced to um, you know graphs and uh, funnels and logical calculations that, that some men do so it's nice to know that I think whatever happens I'm always going to be able to have love romantic love romantic intimacy in my life and like I say many men go to the grave never having invested themselves enough to have a life defining transformation in this realm that's going to bring them the kind of satisfying nourishing relationships that they want so I'll share with you one regret and 
it's nice that I'm only 40 and not 80 and that this is just a, uh, a dying of some illusions or some aspect of my identity rather than the, the, the real end of my life. But the, the one regret that I carry right now that, that I felt very sorely in the build up to my birthday was lack of community. And so when I first went out into the world, I was a little bit shy. And then after a, maybe a year or two, I found ways to socialize, right? Became able to go to any country in the world, find a crowd of people, be able to find a friendship circle, make connections, have drinking buddies, go out partying, enjoying. And within all of that, meet really, really good people I really connected with, not just in the, the fun and the adventure side, but in the deep conversations. And I always had a stream of people throughout my life that were, I would call them friends at the time, but they were kind of acquaintances with depth, you know? And friendships bloomed. But to be in this ultra nomadic frame of mind where new people are so easy to come across and attract in, but then you leave after a few weeks or a few months and rarely see these people in the flesh again, it kind of, there's a little way in which other people or, or friends in the moment can be a little bit instrumental to you having a good time. And the investment in turning these encounters and these kind of amigos into long-term friendships often is missing and missing on both sides, but I'll take full responsibility on that. There, there's been many, many people that I've really cared about and loved dearly that I've just not invested the time, even when our interests kind of diverge and we go separate ways, not texting every few months, not, not meeting up for a call, not holding these friendships in such high enough esteem. And that was never an issue because wherever I went in the world, there would be more people. But now I change. I have a five-year intimate relationship. I have a strong sense of vocation and purpose that I'm very, very uh, committed to with a lot of my energies. And all of a sudden, the social me, the one that was wandering, seeking, open to new people and opportunities, he's not so alive anymore. And the possibility of bringing people into my life is it's not quite the revolving door that it was. And approaching my 40th birthday, I certainly started to feel quite mournful of many of the connections that I've lost along the way or slipped away. And within me, I felt this heightening motivation to reach out to a lot of the people that I've loved and lost and resurrect our connections. And I have obviously good friends here where I live in Bali. And just on the day of my birthday, a couple of them were sick and a couple of them were off the island. And then very, very quickly, it's like, wow, who is my community really? Some acquaintances here and there, but a lot of the, the deep people that I've loved are scattered so far over the world that I don't have that, that sense of living, breathing, kind of knock on the neighbor's door, ask for a cup of sugar style relationship around me. And that's absolutely one thing that I will not tolerate happening for another year. So as I turn 41, that's something I want to have put right. So I hope this video is somehow useful to you. And I think it's very, very interesting that the thing that, that caught me emotionally was more the regret of, of lost friends and people that I've loved that have become distant from me that has had much more of a heaviness on my heart than any sense of I wasn't successful enough or I didn't put myself out there into the world. So if you want to continue and if you want to hear more from me, there are three ways. First of all, if you're not already, you can hit subscribe. And with that, I also put out all of my latest writing on Substack. So the link is just below. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Subscribe to me over on Substack so that you never miss a thing. The second way is if you do want to speak to me about any of your own personal questions, my office now is open. I offer a handful of coaching sessions every single month to new people that I haven't met before. So just click below and you can book a session with me in my calendar. And then thirdly, I do lead a number of mastermind 
courses and live retreats. So if you want to work with me personally over an extended period of time, there are a number of ways that you can do that. As a first stop shop, I very highly recommend my program, Lover, Outlaw, Trickster, Magician. This is a comprehensive guide to your embodiment, how you can build a daily practice that puts you more in touch with different aspects of your own awareness and importantly enlivens the fundamental energy and life force that you feel in your body. Links are all there below. I hope to see you soon in the next video.